I have come back to Iraq to see America's attempts at nation building. Since my last visit, just after the fall of Baghdad, security has worsened. On the road across the western desert, cars are regularly hijacked and looted. In Baghdad itself, after nearly a year of American occupation, anger and despair have increased. Packs of men roam the streets looking for jobs. Unemployment is at least 50%. This lot have been moving from ministry to ministry and under American administration they've found nothing. At Iraqi hospitals, it's not the shortage of electricity or medicines that people protest loudest about, but the lack of security on the streets. This Iraqi businessman, Fauzi Moadine, is visiting his injured son. For eight months he has been asking for American protection against Iraqi thugs who threatened to pillage his cement factory. They tried to kill him twice, but eventually they got to his son, Ozama, with a letter bomb. About 10,000 Iraqi civilians have died since America's invasion. The doctors say it's unlikely that Osama will live. Even with 130,000 American troops, Iraqis feel anything but secure. It's graduation day for the second battalion of 700 Iraqi soldiers. They are just the beginning of a new Iraqi army created by America. These soldiers are a key part of a plan to scale back America's military presence and to start handing back sovereignty on the 1st of July. It is uh, definitely another step closer to Iraqis taking care of uh, their own security and stability and we really appreciate that. We're proud of them. They are celebrating now. Many are happy to have a job and believe in rebuilding their country. But many Iraqis see them as collaborators enforcing American occupation. Their officers know it's going to be a difficult task to win the people's trust. By September, America wants to have 20,000 in this new army. But even if this ambitious target is reached, it's doubtful American casualties will lessen as Bush heads for elections in November. Oh,
But American plans have already suffered a setback. Half of the 1st Battalion, nearly 400 men, deserted just as they were about to begin operations with US troops. They complained about pay and conditions. The Commander-in-Chief of US forces in Iraq, General Sanchez, says the problem is fixed. Their pay has been doubled. I think we have uh, dealt with the problem and uh, we have uh, provided the right allowances at this point and uh, all of the feedback we're getting is that it's, uh, it's satisfactory and adequate. But clearly some in the 2nd Battalion are still not happy. 25-year-old Majid says the soldiers are being mistreated by their officers. <laughs> To deal with this problem, the Americans have set up an officer training school in the north of the country. To get there, I hitch a ride on an American helicopter, the safest way to travel in Iraq. These Black Hawks are manned by spotters who try to stop attacks but they don't always succeed. The day before this flight, a Black Hawk went down, killing all nine on board. Fifteen helicopters have been brought down in recent months. Here at the muddy fort of Telefar, coalition officers, such as Australian Colonel Duncan Haywood, are trying to instill democratic ideals into the future leadership of the new Iraqi army. If we're to have any longevity at this, uh, rather than just build battalions of armed soldiers, we're focused on the leadership and trying to teach uh, accountability, uh, democratic control, uh, no political alliance, debarthification, uh, human rights, justice. So this symbol, or this this, this is no easy story. task in a society where ethnic rivalries have been deliberately fanned for decades. But the trainers claim they are making progress. It's had its challenges. Uh, in the initial stages, the soldiers had difficulty in coming to grips with, I must take orders from a Kurd, and I am an Arab. Or alternatively, I must have Kurds uh, serve underneath me. And we've found that as time goes on, uh, they've built themselves into a, into a team uh, they are more comfortable working uh, along team groups as opposed to ethnic groups and they identify themselves as a platoon, as a company, as a battalion as opposed to I am Sunni, I am Shia, I am Kurd. Creating a new Iraqi army is a massive undertaking made more difficult by an American decree last May to disband the entire old army. That left 400,000 Iraqis without a job or a future, angry at the American administration. The Iraqi leader in this group, Brigadier Shatar, believes this was a crucial mistake. He says to rebuild the country, Iraq needs all the skills and experience it can muster. <laughs> the reality is that as the new Iraqi soldiers take up positions alongside American troops, they'll be attacked and killed. You remember what happened? Sweet. How old are you? 23. U.S. forces have lost more than 500 soldiers, most since President Bush declared major combat over last May. 
This U.S. military hospital is still busy dealing with the victims of 15 to 20 attacks American troops receive each day. Two people should be talking. Only two people should be talking. This soldier was injured in a roadside bombing. What were you in the vehicle? In the back, in the bed of the Humvee. Are you allergic to any you No. But it's the Iraqis working with the Americans who are now being targeted more. Okay. All right, everybody. Just everybody in the room, listen. The other two patients in this hospital, injured in a car bomb, are both Iraqis. The vulnerability of Iraqis working with Americans is well known to Iraq's police force. This was Husseinia police station in the outer suburbs of Baghdad. They're now trying to pick up the pieces and rebuild after a suicide car bomber killed eight policemen last December. Bakar Wahid, the Iraqi police sergeant at Husseinia, is trying to set up another headquarters with the little they have. Iraqi policemen are on the front line in restoring order in Iraq, but Bakar says Americans are not providing enough support. He says the death of his men last December was in vain. Remarkably, they still go on patrol every day, risking life and limb. They're still attacked regularly, and on the day we're filming, we find out that the police station at the nearby town of Akuba has been hit by a suicide bomber killing five. For the insurgents trying to destabilize Iraq, the police are easy targets. They don't have proper weapons, communication systems, or protective clothing like the Americans do. <laughs> Bakar says he has 270 policemen ready to bring security to the area. But he's still waiting for the Americans to deliver on their promises of support. For Paul Bremer, the American charged with guiding Iraq to a stable future, the immediate problem is political. How to get the Shia majority to accept America's plans for the future Iraqi government. <laughs> A key man in this process is Mufaik Rabai. He is a Shiite and a member of the American-appointed Iraqi Governing Council and is the main link between the Americans and the Shiite leadership. Rabai, back from 25 years of exile for his opposition to Saddam Hussein, is well aware of the challenges facing the country. Come back. Uh, we inherited the uh, a ruined country, Matthew. So you've got a huge totally ru ruined country. You have a huge job, all of you in front of you. Absolutely, country. and it's not going to take months. It's not going to take years. It's going to take to take probably decades, and I mean it, to bring back this country to the 
international level uh, and uh, it's a huge job. Four cars surround Rabai in a security cordon. His dozen bodyguards are always ready to avert an attempt on his life. So far, he has survived at least two assassination attempts and a suicide bombing. Working with the Americans at such a high level means Rabai has one of the most dangerous jobs in Iraq. Among this, you need to keep the sense of humor. You need to keep remind uh, speaking to Ali, my son, and speaking to my guards, and uh, bring uh, sort of uh, some jokes, and uh, uh, otherwise you can't, you can't carry on. You what can't. about, do you, I mean, have you got past a point where you worry about your personal security or not? Oh, yes, yes. I mean, you just uh, have to forget about it and just whatever yeah, happens, yeah, happens. Yeah, exactly. Uh, see, the, those like my, people like myself, for the last 35 years we've been working uh, against this regime. We got something, we, this is a golden opportunity for us to rebuild the country. I normally said, whatever it happen, it will happen. This is the fate. This is my fate and I have to face it. The main stumbling block for Rabai and the governing council is the American plan to hand back self-rule to the Iraqis. <laughs> The Americans want regional forums in the governing council to select and appoint a transitional government by July this year, leading to elections in 2005. But the leading cleric of the Iraqi Shia, Grand Ayatollah Sistani, has repeatedly rejected this plan. He wants elections now. In recent weeks, he has brought tens of thousands onto the Iraqi street to protest against the American plans. Sistani has the power of the majority behind him. 60% of Iraqis are Shiites. And one of his representatives in Baghdad, Zayed Garafi, says Sistani has to be listened to. Otherwise, protest could turn into armed resistance. راح يجابهون جبهتين الجبهة الأولى أنه راح تقاومهم قوى الإرهاب والقوى اللي كانت تقاومهم الآن تقاومهم تقاومهم الشيء الثاني القوى التي تطالب بالانتخابات فإذا أخذوا الأمريكان رفضوا جانب الانتخابات فإحنا نعتبر الأمريكا الموقف الأمريكي موقف متطرف ضد الشعب العراقي as a religious leader, Sistani himself refuses to meet any American administrators, but he does meet with Rebaya regularly. It's up to Rubei to find a compromise between the Americans and Sistani. I think it is a potential crisis, but I think we will be able to uh, uh, find out a compromise. Uh, he's still uh, asking for a general direct election. And to be quite honest with you, I will not, I don't, I can't, I can't blame him for that. Uh, uh, election, whatever sort of election we have, it's much better than selection. Uh, and uh, he wanted the people to take their fate to their own hands. Mm. Uh, and that's what he's asking for. Rabai thinks he can find common ground, and Kofi Annan announced this week that the UN will become involved to see if elections are feasible this year, a key Sistani demand. You can argue that the uh, handing over sovereignty is too soon because the people of Iraq are not ready yet to rule themselves. But occupation is not, uh, is not uh, something you, anybody desire for, especially the uh, uh, Americans, British, uh, even for that matter Australians taking part in this. 
they, they can't, uh, we, we can't accept the occupation to carry on. They're, they're different in their, in their religion, different in their culture, different language, uh, different uh, tradition. They don't understand our country. Spending the day with Ramey is an insight into how Iraq functions and how Saddam Hussein's rule corrupted the Iraqi psyche. This man belongs to Rabai's tribe and because of that he wants him to secure a job for him. He's asking me to, if you like, to commit nepotism uh, and by to interfere on his behalf, mm. to, speak, to, to do something, if you like, to give him an extra help wow. in, in staying in a, in a favored place. And that's, that's a real problem. Yeah. The, the corruption in the financial and administrative system is right to the, to the core, not in the infrastructure only. It's in the superstructure and every structure of, the, of this state. We inherited a huge problem, and that's corruption in all aspects of life here. <laughs> As such a crucial political figure, Rabai and his bodyguards are constantly on alert for assassination attempts. On his last stop for the day, a visit to the Free Prisoner Association, a shot was fired in our direction. The shot missed Rebaghi. But his bodyguards take no chances and head for the car. Let's see what. Let's see what. Let's Rebe wants them to find the man. In other attempts on his life, the potential killer has never been identified. Rebay's guards secure the area before they go inside. They're ready for another attack. Eventually, a guard working for the Free Prisoner Association is produced. He says he fired the shot, but it was a mistake. in a country where everyone carries a gun, incidents like this can easily get out of control. This is the reality of being an Iraqi politician. Rabai will probably face more assassination attempts and next time he might not be so lucky.
For the moment, he accepts the guard's explanation. The other major problem for the Americans is the Sunni response to the occupation. Again, Rabay is one of the key link men meeting the Sunni sheikhs of Iraq to try and bring them into the political process. Under Saddam Hussein and his Ba'ath Party, Sunni Muslims were a favoured minority ruling the country. They now have lost that privilege and feel alienated from American administration and its governing council. But Rabay's efforts may be too little, too late. Sunni Muslim groups across Iraq have set up their own state council. They have one aim, to get America out of Iraq. Uh, we take our legality for this political uh, opposition from the occupation itself. In addition that our religion, Islam religion, always call uh, to refuse any occupation, to refuse any oppositively uh, destructive manner from uh, any body, even Muslim. They say they are a political party fighting American rule and claim to have no connections with any military resistance. But the Americans don't believe that and broke up their first meeting at this mosque in late December, arresting 32 of their members. We decided to make, to make this meeting at 10 o'clock. At 10 and a quarter, o'clock at morning, American troops come to this mosque and uh, surround this mosque uh, by about more than uh, 50 or 60 tank uh, and other uh, cars, uh, more than uh, 1,000 soldiers uh, enter uh, the mosque. The group says the military resistance will continue. It has nothing to do with Saddam Hussein, only with nationalist aspirations. Uh, I know that uh, the resistance related to a true people here, true original people, uh, because they refuse this occupation. Uh, refusing of the occupation not related to Saddam or Ba'ath Party. And that's something America has found out. The capture of Saddam Hussein has not ended the attacks against American troops. We got one coming up. In response, the Americans have cracked down on the Iraqi population. They are conducting house-to-house -house searches, arresting hundreds, and putting some areas under curfew. And that's not winning any hearts and minds, just creating more anti-American sentiment. On my last day in Iraq, a suicide car bomb goes off at the main gate of the American headquarters. 25 were killed. It's difficult to see how America can nation build when it can't provide security and has little legitimacy. For the average Iraqi, life has got worse under American occupation. Later that day, I filmed the Iraqi Shia demonstrating against the French government decision to ban the Islamic veil, but it quickly becomes anti-American. It's also difficult to see how America can nation build when it's losing control of the political process. These people might have freedom of speech, but their vision of the future is not one America shares.